All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from San Diego in the United States. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Tarun Kumar, who is in India. How are you doing, Tarun? I'm doing wonderfully well, John, and glad to be here on this platform. Yes, thank you. And I'm glad to have you here. And Tarun is a professional speaker, author, infinite thought leader. Uh, and uh, you were um, formerly a, a colonel in the army. And so you bring all that, uh, all that experience to bear. And what I wanted to talk about is, you know, this concept that you have of being an infinite thought leader and the fact, and you talk a lot about adaptability in the future. So just tell me first, like, what, what's, an, what's an infinite thought leader? Infinite thought leader is not constrained by the environment. And that is what Ami teaches you, that we are all looking at possibilities. Opportunity doesn't knock. We have to build the door, John. And many times we miss out on a lot of opportunities because we do not have that kind of vision, that kind of mindset. And we are certainly looking for things from a very different perspective. When I talk about infinite thought leader, I am mentioning about the possibility we as individuals have. Human beings are the best gift that God could create and we have infinite potential. We are looking for possibility. We are looking for opportunities. And that is what makes we as human beings so great. Yeah, because um, I mean, I, I haven't been in the in the military myself, but I have talked to plenty of people who have been. And I guess one of the things that you become very good at is making making decisions and figuring out a way forward when you don't have all all the information to hand. Absolutely. You know, uh, whichever military, whichever army, on the very first contact with the enemy, your best laid out plan, they go for a six. So we have worked out on n number of contingencies and all of a sudden we are grappling with something which is altogether different and that is something which you have not catered for and that is where your adaptability your ability to work in this environment comes in you are what you are and what your environment makes you because you have to now think on your two feet and possibly look after the welfare of the people, the soldiers who are around you. And same holds true for the corporate world, John. Yeah. So as a leader, so as a leader in the military, right, as you said, I mean, people, when when the going gets tough or when you engage in the enemy with the enemy or something's something major is happening, there are people looking to you for for answers, right, or looking to see how you're reacting. And I guess it's the same in in the corporate world, in business, uh, you know, people are looking for you to to have the answers, but you don't have all the answers. So how do you how do you adapt and how do you help keep the confidence of those around you knowing that you don't have all the answers? John, this is a very good question because none of us has all the answers and neither we have the avenues that we can. So what I do is that I follow two things. The first thing that I do is that I make people aware of the kind of uncertainty that is there in that zone in which we all are operating. Making people aware that what we are grappling with does a lot of wonder because now you are that much more aware of the uncertainty. And the second thing that I do is that I make them work that how I'm going to take them out of this uncertainty. And that is something which is magical. It has a very magical effect on the people. You know, most of us are grappling with the kind of concept that who brought us in here and who is responsible for the kind of situation that you are. If we tell our people that this kind of uncertainty is because we were not ready for the future. Like when pandemic hit us, we all were left grappling with that reality because the best corporations in the world had never imagined in their wildest of dreams that there would be a stage in their professional career where things will come to standstill and not for days, for months altogether. And how they are going to grapple with that kind of change. And me and you, we both come from the same background. So you know that 
there's something very interesting, which I generally inform people about it, that the victory on the battlefield doesn't go to the side which is the strongest. Victory on the battlefield goes to the side which is fastest to respond to the changing environmental realities. And the same holds true for the corporate world. I hope you agree to that. Oh yes, a hundred percent, Tarun. Because I think what what we saw during the during the pandemic was there were some companies who were able to adapt and move quickly, but I think there was a lot of companies that were really caught kind of flat-footed, and they were it was like trying to turn the Titanic uh, around uh, in terms of being able to adapt. And I think one of the lessons coming out of this pandemic is exactly what you talk about, and that is not just the adaptability but the ability to make decision to make good decisions fast and to act quickly absolutely john the thing that what i learned and which when i was instructor and i've trained soldiers not only in india but also abroad what i made them aware of was that we all have to go through a certain loop and you would be but for the sake of repetition i will mention it that there is something called as the oda loop O O D A. So, firstly, you observe yourself, the kind of landscape that you're operating. Then you orient yourself to this landscape. Then you decide, and then you act. And the side which is able to complete this entire loop in a faster time frame, victory goes to them. Mm. <laughs> there is no, there is, there is no magic about it. It is just about that how quick you are on your two feet, how quick you are in arriving a decision. You know, most of us are chari or we are very apprehensive of taking a decision because we want all our decisions to be right. It need not necessarily be right because many a times the kind of lessons that we learn from the decisions that we have made, they gave us a whole lot more of insight than a right decision would have given. Yeah, that's 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 a profound point, and I I totally agree with you. And I think if you go back to your model there, the the Oda uh, observing, I mean, quickly observing and taking things in, um, that's a skill that has been lost by a lot of people because we live in this very noisy, busy world where we're distracted all the time. So, being able to observe something quickly and take in the information and and be able to act on it, that that doesn't come as naturally to people as perhaps it once did. Yes, and you know, it is a skill. Me and you learned it in the army. We were not born with it, but in some manner or the other, we all do it. The only different thing, the other thing that differentiates us is that probably somebody would be taking a little bit more time than what me and you take because of our training. And so I always tell that it is a skill set that you can learn and you have to be aware of your surroundings. So even today, when I've hung, hung up my uniform and I'm in the city street training people, if I go to a mall, I'm not being very negative about this thing, but I always look at the exit places, which all places are there because we are living in a very uncertain world. And that comes with a territory that you have to look out for that. If something happens, then will I be able to influence the outcome? Look, something has happened. So now how fast I can be of assistance to the people in that zone and can I make a material difference to men material and probably the most important life and if we can do that we are worthy of being on this planet yeah and if you think about during the pandemic right and all the things that have happened one of the things that people you know in in, in business were looking to is to their leaders to not necessarily as we said I mean we are in the middle of a pandemic Nobody really knows what's going to happen. It's the first time it's ever happened. Um, but they were really looking for their leaders to be able to reach out and say, OK, I know you're there. I know you're uh, I know you're feeling uncertain yourselves. I know this is a difficult time. We're all in this together, just kind of bringing people together, even if they were spread out and had to all go virtual across the world. John, we are all humans and we believe in human connect. And Connecting with human beings is like pandemic taught us that we need not be going in for a golden handshake. No, the kind of physical presence is very much important. Thanks to this pandemic, me and you are conversing today and probably sharing some different thoughts and 
something that will benefit a lot of people. The same thing happened when the pandemic struck. Most of the leaders that I was conversing with, which I was coaching, training, I realized that they were dumbstruck because in their wildest of dreams, they had never ever imagined a situation like pandemic when everything will come to a standstill and they had no plans. You know, most of the people, these Ivy League grads, they all believe in that they have a lot of plans up their sleeves and they'll be able to turn around through a sticky situation. Here they were neck deep into a situation where like the, in our commando training or in US Marines, when you're neck deep, you feel that this is the time I'm feeling warmer and I'm getting it. Now, people were almost losing hope. And that, that is the time when all your subordinates, peers, everyone who's looking up to you, they get a sense of whether here is the leader who can inspire me, who can take me out of this sticky situation, or he himself is grappling with. So what I did was, I asked people that instead of pretending, putting up a false front, giving people false hope, be authentic, accept your vulnerability and ask people that how best we can come out of it. You know, as collectively, when we think we get wonderful solutions because there are people who are from a domain who have a sense of what is happening and probably they, they were working on the backside. They were not so upfront in sharing their views, but they have wonderful ideas. And these were the people who came out with such wonderful ideas, which turned around their, not only the business, but also gave them a lease of life. It not only gave them a opportunity to work during the circumstances, but also diversified them into a totally different domain with over the last 18 months. Now they have a totally different vertical, which is booming like anything. And it is all because of the people who were there and they were associated with each other. So this human connect is so important in any relationship. It is not necessarily always have to be a transactional relationship. We have to add value to each other. Yeah, you know what's fascinating, Tarun, is uh, what you're talking about there, but what's fascinating is, uh, as you said, there's no case study in the Harvard Business School or anywhere else uh, about how to deal with a, a, a catastrophe like a pandemic. So as you say, nobody, nobody was better informed than anyone else. And the pandemic was the first really global, shared global experience. Because if you think about it, world wars and those, they weren't really world wars. Yes, they affected a lot of places, but there were places it didn't affect. This affected everybody. So to your point, it was a bit of an equalizer in some ways. So yeah, I agree. There are probably people who in different parts of organizations who for the first time had an influence because they had just as much, they had just as much insight as everybody else. It's very important, John. A lot of us have our skin in the game. We are just shy of sharing it with the environment or we think that because most of us, we associate leadership with the title or a position. Your pay grade doesn't decide that you are a leader, the kind of influence you have on the people. I have been to corporations where when we were having this break during my talk, I just asked them that if you have anything, whom do you look up to? You would be amazed to get the answer. There was this runner, the guy who used to run around with errands, and he has been with this organization for almost donkey years. He had the courage and the conviction to even walk up to the director's sales to tell him that this is not the right time to launch this product, and people would listen to him. It was all about his involvement in the job he was keeping his eyes and ears open and he was adding value. People valued him and they would not miss their director sales as much as they would be missing this guy if he didn't come even for a single day. It's so true is that the, the human connection and looking and coming together and looking for collective solutions and taking inputs from everywhere. I think this is definitely 
I think this was starting and people were talking about it, but I think the pandemic has really made that something, has made it almost a template for people going forward is that you have all of these different people, you have all of these different experiences, and the more you can tap into them, the better solutions you can create. Yes, each and every one of us has the potential to be the leader of tomorrow, the leader of future, probably the leader we wish we had. The problem is that, do you believe in yourself? And when we are going through these sticky situations, what I've seen is that what is being taught in these grad schools and all those places, like as I told you that on the very first contact with the enemy, most of your well laid out plans go for a stick. So these mm -hmm. people, they were only taught things for which there were case studies. Now, when there is a situation that we're encountering where there is no case study, where there is no parallel in the history, John, what do you do? You are left grappling with because you don't have a previous knowledge of something where you could find some gem of information which you could template it into the current environment. Unfortunately, most of us, we end up templating things which may, may not be right for that environment. And that is where the problem in today's leadership is, that we think that we know a lot and we are not great learners. We are constantly evolving. Every day I learn a lot from you. Like during this conversation, I'm learning a lot about what, the, in, what you are sharing with me and the kind of questions that I'm getting at. Similarly, I would like to bring a totally different perspective to this conversation with my experience. And that is where the confluence of two good thought processes make it a very enriching experience. What do you say? I, I absolutely agree with you. And I think that's the model going forward is that is that really good leadership means that you engage with other people. And, you know, well, number one, as you said, you learn all the time, but you engage with other people. You, you, you create the environment where they can contribute. And I think that's the big thing is you create, you create the mechanism for people to come together and contribute. Absolutely. In the sales field, what I've seen is that, look, that is one of the most challenging fields. And why so? Because a lot of people, they ask that, Colonel, how can you speak on sales? I said that I can speak on sales is because right from our childhood, we are always selling. Yeah, <laughs> we are true. selling ourselves. Sales is never ever about selling products. If I come to you or if you come to me, I am looking at what John has to offer, how John is connecting with me, what kind of vibes am I getting? And that persona of John makes me believe that what John is associated with would be surely better than what others are offering in the field. And that is how I'm gravitating towards John. And I finally, over a period of time, could be anything, I will go in for the final deal. And that is what life is all about. Because ultimately, the, the person will buy that thing only when he's confident of you and he's confident of what you are offering him and persistence, determination pays a major role. And if a salesperson is not having these two things, I think he'll find it very yeah. tough to survive in this environment. Yeah. It's all about your mentality, nothing else. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. Uh, absolutely, Tarun, it's all about mindset and, and mentality. And that's a great place to, to end on today. So. All of Tarun's information is going to be below this video so you can find and get in contact. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about what you do. John, uh, I'm a leadership coach and that stems from my three decades in the army. Been there, seen that and everything, what I would share with you is that I'm hugely passionate about the concept of human brilliance. I believe that we human beings have immense potential to change this world and be a better version of whatever we can. Now, what is important is that how we are going to do something. We are all irritated by the rub. We don't want to encounter difficult situations. And if you want to be polished, how can't you be rubbed? So this life gives us ample opportunity to be rubbed, to be shoved, and to be pushed into tight situations 
but it is the human resilience that makes us come out of those because when my back is against the wall the only way i can move is forward and i love mm-hmm. to be pushed against the wall because till such time you are not pushed against the wall you don't know the kind of potential you have as a leadership proponent i help people bring out these things because my military service helped me come out of sticky situations because of couple of things and the most important thing was which i started doing with my battlefield to boardroom strategy was that how the learnings in the military are as equally important in the corporate world there are a lot of skills which are transferable and more meaningful in the corporate world than ever before today the art of war by sun tzu is being discussed in the corporate boardrooms so why not imbibe those traits imbibe those qualities and be even a better version than what you are actually right now and what is stopping you most of the time we are stopping ourselves nobody else is stopping us so these corporate honchos they have their own fixed ideas and they feel that oh yes we are working good as a team ask for yourself because here nobody is asking you to go in for an ultimate sacrifice take a bullet for you and yeah. still we do not have that kind of mindset we do not have that kind of camaraderie esprit the core and the bottom line is that we are only looking at the top line you should be looking at the kind of value that you are adding the kind of team that you are creating the kind of environment you are offering to your people if these things are there there would be hardly any corporation any organization which won't be doing wonders and that is what i help people to get into how to create good workspaces where people feel loved they would love to come every day to the workplace rather than offering an excuse yeah. can we do that yeah listen that's fantastic i love it so again i would encourage everybody to go to the links below check out tarun and uh and all of what he does i mean you hear from the passion there and the change and i totally agree with you i think it's time if if the pandemic shoved a lot of people out of their comfort zones now is the time to stay outside your comfort zone don't run try and run back into it because the magic happens as you know outside of comfort zones absolutely yeah so listen thank you very much again tarun for joining us from india my name is john golden i will see you all for another interview really soon thank you